Belize Caribbean, May 24, 1988. On the tarmac, a recently landed Boeing 737-3T0 aircraft belonging to Taka Airlines from San Salvador is preparing to depart for its final destination, New Orleans. On board the aircraft are 45 people, 38 passengers and 7 crew members. An experienced crew is ready to operate the Boeing. Captain Carlos Dardano, 29 years old, despite his young age, has accumulated 13,410 flight hours, 4,011 of which were on the Boeing 737. First Officer Dionisio Lopez, 48 years old, is also an experienced pilot with over 12,000 flight hours. In the cockpit, along with the crew, is Taka Airlines pilot instructor Arturo Soleil. In the cabin, there are four flight attendants. At 10.55 local time, the dispatcher grants permission to our crew for takeoff, and the Boeing 737 lifts off from the runway of Belize Airport, heading towards New Orleans. Our crew's entire flight proceeds without incident, and as we approach our destination, the crew begins the descent from FL 350, 10,650 meters, for landing in New Orleans. At this time, the pilots are monitoring the weather using the weather radar as thunderstorms with hail are developing in New Orleans. Upon reaching 9,100 meters, Flight 110 enters a dense cloud layer and the crew activates the anti-icing system to protect the aircraft from ice and atmospheric precipitation. Additionally, to prevent flame-out and engine thrust loss, the pilots engage continuous ignition. Despite flying using the weather radar, our aircraft still encounters heavy precipitation. Breaking through the downpour a few minutes later, the pilots face an unexpected situation. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, both engines unexpectedly lose thrust, leading to a loss of electrical power. Due to the failure of both engines and subsequent loss of electrical power, our aircraft's radar signature disappears from the radar screens of New Orleans Airport air traffic controllers and radio communication is instantly lost. The pilots initiate an emergency descent to an altitude of 3,200 meters, since this altitude is the minimum required for auxiliary power unit activation. At an altitude of 3,200 meters, the pilots initiate the auxiliary power unit, APU, restoring electrical power and hydraulics on board. They then attempt to restart the engines, but the energy from the APU proves insufficient for ignition. Attempts to increase throttle only lead to overheating, prompting the pilots to shut down both engines to prevent catastrophic fire. Meanwhile, 2nd Officer Lopez communicates a distress signal, but despite the assistance of New Orleans air traffic controllers offering directions to the closer lakefront airport, it proves too distant for our crew. Captain Dardano, after quick calculations, realizes their chances of a safe landing are slim. At just 1,500 meters altitude, the crew manages to start the left engine first, followed immediately by the right engine. However, a serious problem arises. The engines run, but fail to provide power. Within seconds, an overheating warning sounds in the cockpit, prompting Captain Dardano to decide to shut down both engines. Flight 110 is now at 1,100 meters altitude, emerging from the clouds, but the rain persists. With no engine thrust, the crew has less than three minutes to find a suitable location for an emergency landing. The air traffic controller suggests landing on a highway 11 kilometers away, but Captain Dardano, after recalculating, determines the aircraft won't make it. Realizing that attempting to restart both damaged engines is futile, the pilots begin surveying the terrain, considering options for an emergency landing on marshy ground. The aircraft rapidly loses speed and altitude. At 600 meters, the Ground Proximity Warning System, GPWS, alerts them to low altitude. Yet, Captain Carlos Dardano continues to fight for the lives of the passengers and crew. Throughout his life, 
Captain Dardano has defied fate multiple times. Three years ago, in 1985, during the Civil War in El Salvador, Captain Dardano's aviation career suffered a devastating blow. During his time piloting a cargo Douglas DC-3 aircraft, Dardano flew with a family and their son to an airport amidst the jungles. When they landed and stepped out of the plane, there was no one around to greet them. He had a bad feeling about the situation, then someone shot him in the face. A sniper gorilla in the jungle shot him from behind, the bullet passing through his cheek and exiting through his left eye. Somehow, he still managed to evacuate his passengers and return them to safety, but he was seriously wounded. His left eye was missing and he required extensive facial surgery. However, in his heart, he was a pilot and refused to give up. With approval from the Federal Aviation Administration, he obtained a license to operate commercial aircraft despite his disability, demonstrating his exceptional skills and unwavering dedication to the profession. Now, Captain Dardano once again challenges fate and continues to fight for life, no matter the cost. At an altitude of 450 meters, the crew decides on a water landing, but during descent towards the canal, Second Officer Lopez notices an embankment to the right, parallel to the canal and 31 kilometers from New Orleans Airport. To adjust the course, Captain Dardano executes a wing slide maneuver, the pilots aligning the necessary course at an altitude of 210 meters and begin the approach for landing. At 12.55 local time, Flight TA-110 touches down first with one, then the other rear landing gear, after which the crew successfully brings the liner to a safe stop. Captain Dardeno announces the evacuation over the loudspeaker. The flight attendants assist passengers in safely exiting the aircraft. Captain Dardano, as is customary, leaves the aircraft last, and emergency services arrive at the scene. As a result of the emergency landing, none of the 45 people on board flight 110 perished with only one passenger sustaining minor injuries. The National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, conducted the investigation into the crash of Flight TA-110. According to the final investigation report, the failure of both engines occurred due to hail and rain. Hailstones entering the engines melted and formed water. Additionally, during the flight, the aircraft encountered an area of intense precipitation. The NTSB concluded that the formation of water could have led to the engine failure, even though the engines complied with the standards of the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, and their water protection certification was conducted at high power settings, where they functioned reliably. However, as Flight 110 descended, the autopilot automatically reduced the engine power. NTSB investigators decided to conduct further tests on a test stand, with the engines set at the power level corresponding to the moment before the engine failure. As a result, the engines failed to cope with the water flow and stopped, fully confirming the crew's version of events. Subsequently, the NTSB issued recommendations for changes to the engine design, including modifying the shape of the engine's front portion to reduce hail ingestion and adding additional drainage holes.